All right, so I wanted to make sure we finished or you had access to answers to the questions you were working on in class yesterday. So let's go through these questions. All right, so we have a piece of fruit and it's falling. So maybe we'll just draw it. Here's my fruit. It's going this way. Um, so we're being asked about work done by gravity and also the potential energy of gravity. So the gravitational force is down, here's mg, and it's moving down, let's just write delta s, so that would be positive work. But because the potential energy of gravity is given as mgy, we're going to go to a lower y, and so our change in potential energy is going to be negative because we're going to end up at a lower potential energy than where we started. So the gravitational force will do positive work and the gravitational potential energy will decrease. This is all self-consistent because in a sense, the gravitational potential energy was the stored energy that will allow the gravity to do the work. So it will go down as the work is done. All right, so this question has to do with the idea that when we write the potential energy function of gravity, we get to choose our reference point. We get to choose where y is zero. Because the reason for this is because what really matters is not the individual value of potential energy, but how it changes. And the change will be the same no matter what we choose as our reference point. So for A, for the ball on the table, the y equals zero would have been at the floor so that then the potential energy it has on the table is mgd. I should put for A. For expression B, y is zero here, and that's okay. The one that was kind of weird was the negative potential energy. And if we put the potential energy or the y value as zero d units above the table, then the potential energy of the ball would be minus mgd. So the basic idea is the potential energy of this gravity, uh, the gravitational potential energy of this ball could be anything. It just depends on what you choose as your y equals zero. And you can also see that definitely it's possible to have a negative potential energy. Well, I just said that in the last question, and it is possible for a system to have negative potential energy. Um, so the reason is, as we saw with the last example, is the choice where potential energy is zero is rather arbitrary. So it's always possible that because of what you chose as your zero point, you will end up with a potential energy less than zero at some other location. All right, so here we have this rock going around in this hemispherical ball, and it says mechanical energy is conserved. So remember that if mechanical energy is conserved, the only forces that can do work would be the examples that we had that had potential energy functions, which would be gravity and a spring. In this case, we do have gravity. Um, it's frictionless, so we don't have to worry about friction. Um, there is another force acting here. There's a normal force acting on the rock. But the normal force is always perpendicular to the bowl. And because of that, because N is perpendicular to the bowl surface, it's always going to be perpendicular to any displacement. means it can't do work. 
So even though that force is present, because it's not doing work, we allow the, that allows the energy to be conserved. Okay, here's another example. We have two very different ramps. One is sort of curved shape and goes very low and then goes up high. And the other one's just a simple inclined plane. One thing that we notice is the blocks have the same initial Y value and same fi final Y value. We're told they're frictionless. And so energy is going to be conserved in this problem. And if energy is conserved, it means that these are the initial points and the final points. The U initial and the U final well, the, are same for both situations. So U final one and U final two are the same. U initial two and one are the same. And so K final two will be equal to K final one they're just exactly the same. It doesn't actually matter what's happening in the middle, but because they begin at the same situation and end at the same situation, they're gonna to have to have the same speed at the end of the track. Okay, and so the final slide is a question. And I like this question because a pendulum is a very good example of a situation where energy can be conserved. A swing is just a pendulum with a kid on it. Here's my little kid. The angle is 42 degrees. And we know as it swings down, it would end up down here. This would be the final point. This is the initial point. And what we're trying to figure out is how much this has gone up. What is the H? All right, so how are we gonna find that H? Well, if we look at this, so this is the length of the uh, rope for the swing is 2.2 meters. This side right here, let me outline it in a different color. This side right here could be given by L cosine of 42. And this side, if we go to the very bottom of where the swing will hit, so I'm trying to make that even, this would be L. And if we look at that, then we might be able to see that H plus L cosine of 42 is equal to L. So H is equal to L minus L cosine of 42. If I do that, I find that my H is 0.565 meters. The first question then asks, so up here, initial point, the swing has all potential. And it would be equal to MGH. And so the first question asks, how much is its potential energy compared to the bottom? So it would be MGH which is 25 times 9.8 times 0.565. And that ends up to be um, 138.4 joules. To look at how fast she's at the bottom, I'm just gonna use conservation of energy. Initially, she has no kinetic. At the bottom, she has no potential. So setting the potential energy initial to the final kinetic energy. I know I have a value for all this, but I'm just going to do some simplification to point out that a lot of times these things can simplify. And then if I put in my values, I would find a speed of 3.33 meters per second. The last part of the question asks, how much work does the tension in the ropes do? I'm going to just draw the swing again. Here's the swing. The tension in the rope would be like this. 
along the rope, the tension is always going to be perpendicular to the motion and the displacement. So tension doesn't do any work, which allowed us to use conservation of energy.